Hey everyone, and welcome to Mindfulness When Your Mind Feels Full. This co-taught lesson is going to be awesome. Um, to get you ready to start today, all of this is going to be happening on Pear Deck, which is an awesome tool. So on your device, feel free to join as we are just getting started with our morning or afternoon, wherever you're joining us from. There's no rush, we still have time. So don't rush at all. <laughs> yeah, two, well, I can't tell. One computer says it's 58, one says it's 56. Oh, so in the middle at 57. <laughs> and my phone says 57. <laughs> <laughs> so on your computers or your devices, you're going to go to the website joinpd.com, which is just at the top of Mari's screen there, joinpd.com. And then you're going to type in that code about the Misty Zebras who neatly jump new carrots, which is I a love very the join fun. codes. So silly. We got our first student. Hooray! Yay! Right on. Um, so once we get more than three people connected, we have some fun would you rather questions to, to quiz each other with before we get into our lesson today going to be fun. You'll notice you all are joining with nicknames also, so we'll be shouting out those silly nicknames as we go <laughs> and as you answer. Mm -hmm. And while we're going through our lesson, everything that you need to do is on this Pear Deck tab, so just leave it open. Hopefully we're projected on your teacher's screen somehow. Maybe you are doing learning at home today and you were project projected through your um, video with your teacher or maybe you're in classroom and we're on the screen but on your device you should have this pair deck open the whole time and that's how you'll talk to Mari and I today. Seven. There it goes. Nice. It's crazy. <laughs> awesome. It's going up like crazy. <laughs> Should we introduce ourselves, Mari, while we're waiting for our, our students to join us? We can do that. We can do it now and we can do it officially in however many minutes when we get there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Mari. I'm in San Diego, California. And I'm joined by... I'm Bailey. I'm in the middle of nowhere, Alberta. <laughs> Not a big city like San Diego. Um, it's called Concert. I don't think anybody's heard of it. <laughs> but yes, we have a North American team, just the Western side, I guess. Hey, oh, everyone, I'll hop in here as well and just introduce myself. I'm Coulter, and I'm calling in from Toronto today, and I'm just working in the back end here to make sure that everything runs smoothly. Uh, teachers, if you have any questions, feel free to pop those in our, our chat here, and I can help you out. Looking forward to a great workshop today. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Mm -hmm. Look at that number climbing and climbing and climbing, 167. I got 199 right now. On my <gasps> Holy moly. Oh, so yeah. we are waiting for a lot of people then. So my friends, if you have not yet gone to joinpd.com and entered this code about the Misty Zebras, who are very athletic, <laughs> then you need to do that because that's how you will um, talk with Mari this morning. So we'll make sure you go to joinpd.com. Should we set a goal, Mari, and then we'll... I'm just mesmerized watching the number pop no, up. My brain isn't able to produce any words <laughs> because I'm just like, oh, watch, we're at 209. Um, <laughs> uh, Maybe you want, oh, now it's claiming crazy. Um, 250, 275, 300? <clears throat> I think let's aim for 275. Perfect. And then we should be good. So, and we're going to get there really quick, apparently. <laughs> yeah, it is. Awesome. It's jumping just like these new carrots. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
That was a good one. That was pretty cheesy, but it was a good one. We did I'm, it. I'm, yeah. <laughs> oh, we did it. Oh my gosh. That took no time at all. No time. Um, <laughs> while we kind of get us started, I'm going to leave this open for just a few more minutes. Um, and uh, Coulter will drop in the joinpd.com and the join code into the chat. So teachers, if you need it later, if a student joins. Um, you know, after we close this, then you're still able to get in. But while this number is climbing rapidly, I'll leave it up for just a second longer. Um, so oh, we, sorry, Mari, just to interrupt you. The code will yes, be in the top corner of this screen, too. So if you get disconnected accidentally, the code is at the top, top right hand corner. Yes, you will find it there. It will always be there, always there <laughs> for you. So we're about to launch into an awesome hour when we're going to be talking about mindfulness. I don't know about you, but my mind feels so full with everything I have to do and you know all the you know chores and homework and lessons and things. And so we're going to go through a bunch of different strategies today talking about how we can help our mind when we feel overwhelmed, when we feel stressed, and even when we don't. So I think you all will find at least something in here that works for you uh, as we go through. What do you think, Bailey? I think let's dive right in. Let's get awesome. started. We can wait. If, um, folks, if you're still joining, please do not stress. You can see the code still at the top right hand corner of Mari's screen. You can still join in, um, but we'll get started and you can join in wherever we're at. <laughs> Perfect. Well, all of our anonymous animals, it's great to see you all. Again, here is your team for today. Again, I'm Mari. I am a, a teacher in San Diego, and I'm joined by my two friends. I'm Bailey. I'm in concert. <laughs> it's nice to see you all today, even though I can't see you. It's really nice to be here with you all today. I'm so excited for this hour, and I will be your voice. So all of those responses you send in the Pear Deck, I get to um, share them with Mari and everybody else when we share our responses. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you have to share today. Yes, and teachers, if you need anything in the um, chat, you're able to talk with Coulter, get any help, uh, ask questions and such. and. Uh, we're going to make it an awesome hour. So all the adults that are tuning in with us too, this session is for you also, um, not just for us kids, but it's for all of us. So um, as we get started, uh, I want to acknowledge that I am down here in Southern California. So you can see that small box, that's where I'm, uh, that's where I live, that's where I'm from. And it's the territory of the Kumeyaay people. And they are in Southern California, Northern Baja California, which is all around Mexico. And I feel very grateful to be coming at you from this very beautiful land. So thank you. Thank you. You can learn more kind of in native land. It's very, very informative. So here's who we are. Um, we are here representing Cobblestone Collective, and we are so excited to be able to uh, partner to put on this session for you and with you. You ready? Let's okay. do it. Let's go. Well, here is what is uh, happening <laughs> under today's plan. It says full. <laughs> I don't know what happened with when I was typing, um, but clearly my mind felt full and under caffeinated when I was attempting to type that. Um, but uh, today's plan, we are going to go through some um, breathing techniques. We're going to try a body scan. We're going to do some chair stretches. We're going to do some journaling and some other types of check-ins uh, with our brains and with our bodies to kind of help um, and see, you know, what strategies work for us. Now, all of these strategies, you know, not everything will work for you and that is okay. The reason why we're showing you a ton of different strategies is so you can find maybe one or two that work really, really well for you. Uh, but also trying new things can help you and help your brain, you know, feel calm, feel more relaxed, um, feel more present in school and in life and with family and friends. So that is our plan for today. So to get us started, this is um, in Pear Deck. So go ahead and you should see it pop up in your uh, Pear Deck screen on your device. Again, if you need the join code, it's up in the top right corner. Um, but just right now, what is filling your bucket today? Meaning what is making you feel 
happy, energized, content, and what is draining your bucket? So maybe stressing you out, making you feel sad. So in uh, this slide, you can write, you can draw. I see a whole bunch of people have figured out that this is a drawing slide. So if you click and drag or drag your finger, if you're using a touch screen, you can draw on this slide. You can also add a text box. If you're not a drawer, a text box button is at the bottom. So you just press that A and then you can type. We'll give you another minute or so. We need it. All right, so our tree frog says that their family is filling their bucket. And today, draining their bucket is school. And that, you know what, I can empathize with that. It is it has been a long school year and we're almost at the end. We're right there with you, but I'm so happy you have a family to fill your bucket. Somebody must have an early dismissal today. Going home early <laughs> is they're filling their bucket. That person is a squirrel in case you're curious what your <laughs> what your animal avatar is. <laughs> I'm seeing so many people that have family and pets and um, animals around them to fill their buckets. I love it. I do. So nice to hear. All right, give me about 20 more seconds. Does that seem reasonable, Bailey? I think so, yeah. Okay, perfect. The weather is filling somebody's bucket. It must be sunshiny there. It's sunshiny mm -hmm. here today too. That's definitely a bucket filler. That's a good reminder. I hadn't thought of the weather yet as a bucket yeah. filler. Our marine layer hasn't quite burned off yet. That's a uh, something a little unique to, you know, the West Coast coastal regions is mm -hmm. cloudy and gloomy, and then, you know, mid morning, early afternoon, it burns off and it's beautiful. I love it. <laughs> I love it when it burns off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the sun is trying to come out right now. <laughs> oh, alrighty. If anyone else needs to get in, there's your join code. Oh. But another quick little uh, check in. Oops. There we go. Nope. <laughs> here we go. All right. Whew, we have a lot of friends on here. This is great. Um, so real quick, uh, another great check-in opportunity is a stress check. So um, you know, figuring out how are you feeling right now? How is this impacting you? I think it's an always a good check-in if you just can check in with your body, check in with your mind, like you know, if you're kind of in that green zone, all right, you know, move on. Maybe if you're in kind of the yellow orange zone, you know, maybe trying some of these um, mindfulness activities. And, you know, if you're in the red zone, you've definitely got to do some immediate mindfulness activities. Um, you know, a lot of good things that we'll talk about today that can help you. Great job, everyone. Definitely have a range coming from everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so perfect. Now we are going to kind of talk about um, emotions. So to get us started, you know, learning how to talk about our emotions is really, really important. So um, give you an opportunity in Pear Deck to list some examples of positive emotions you might feel.
Nice. We're getting a big list here. We have happiness, joy. Oh, somebody said gratitude. Awesome. There's so many good examples here. Yeah. A great. A lot of great examples. You know, <laughs> it's easy to, you know, those happy, but also things like content, satisfied, calm, peaceful. You know, those are some positive emotions. Giggly. <laughs> That's Ooh, I love that one. <laughs> Uh, and on the flip side, you know, recognizing what are some negative emotions you might feel as well. Remember, we don't we don't always feel positives. Maybe some emotions that are less comfortable, less fun. There's examples here like sad, frustrated, angry. Definitely. Lots of examples too. And that's the thing about emotions. There's positive and they're negative. They come from both sides, right? So it's good to be able to identify the kinds of emotions you have. Tired is definitely <laughs> a negative emotion for some people. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Excellent job, everyone. Um, all right. I'm going to show you one of my favorite tools and uh, I use this in my classroom a lot. Oops, it, it's just waiting to, there we go. Now it's happy. Um, there we go, slowly loading. There we go. Um, we use the mood meter a lot to help us identify emotions. Cause you know, when you say, how do you feel like either good or bad, it doesn't really explain everything that you might feel. So um, the mood meter is a great way to identify kind of different types of emotion. So up here in the yellow, you know, you have pleasant to ecstatic. That's like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I can't even <laughs> handle it. Um, you know, you think like puppy when you come home, <laughs> that's ecstatic. Um, but you know, like pleasant, joyful, cheerful, upbeat, motivated. You know, those are all some that are kind of in that yellow quadrant. Um, kind of in the red quadrant, you know, you have peeved. Um, you know, annoyed, like, ah, uh, you know, annoyed, restless, frightened, troubled, fuming, you know, these different ways that we can express uh, the uh, different emotions that we have. You know, you might not just feel tired, maybe you feel drained, maybe you feel mopey. Um, those are all ways to um, share your emotions. You know, kind of the green section also, you could feel grateful, satisfied, carefree, you know, at ease. These are all really nice ways to um, express how we are feeling. So using, you know, different types of language to help us understand our different feelings. Um, so I love this for myself because um, it really helps me figure out like not only what am I feeling, but why? Um, and for my students as well, we like to identify how we're feeling just like this in Pear Deck, moving a little icon to where we are. How about you, Bailey? Have you ever used this with your students? Yes, I have. And you will not know what always, always comes up is that we oftentimes really only have a few words right immediately to describe. Like, I'm feeling really happy today. But if you dig down a little bit deeper, what's making you really happy? And it's a good chance to take a look at the things in your life that make you feel happy, like your pets or your family or your friends. So you can be a little bit more grateful for the things that cause those emotions. And the same goes for if you're feeling really, really mopey and kind of apathetic and sad about things, gives you a second to stop and take a look about um, why you might be feeling that way. Checking in with your mood and more than just saying, I'm sad and mad or I'm happy and joyful. Um, will you having more words helps you to explore your emotions a little bit more thoroughly yeah i love what you said there and it leads us right into our next uh thing that we're going to look at which is halt um and this comes from you know other uh other places not not in education um so some of you may have heard of this before but a lot of times when we're feeling more negative emotions 
it's from one of these four things. I'm either hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, or maybe a combination. Maybe you are hangry. You know, maybe, um, you know, maybe it's uh, 11, 15 a.m. and you're just like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> is it lunchtime yet? I'm hungry. And so therefore, you know, I'm more likely to feel annoyed or frustrated. Um, maybe you didn't sleep well last night and you're feeling tired. And so you know that when you're tired, you're more likely, um, you know, to be short with the people that you care about, you know, to snap at them or, you know, uh, feel a little bit more annoyed more quickly. I know for me, if I'm hungry or tired, especially, um, I'm not as patient. <laughs> so I think this is a good way to kind of identify a lot of those things that, you know, when you're feeling those things, a lot of times they come from other places. Right. You're not yourself when you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. <laughs> mm -hmm. Definitely something yeah. I had to learn. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. If you kind of like reduce yourself to like, if I were a baby, you know, babies cry when they feel one of these things, um, you know, and then we take care of their needs. So we have to be as, as you know, bigger humans um, that don't have somebody there to like directly, you know, feed us, put food into our mouths or you know, stew this, we have to learn how to do this ourselves. Right. And that's important. That's a really good point. If we had a little puppy that was being really mopey, we would probably make sure that it had enough food and water that day. But we often don't do that for ourselves, right? So yeah. Care of water. That's <laughs> thirsty. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Drinking plenty of water is good. Awesome. All right. So now we have another question for you. So this will come through in uh, Pear Deck. So how does your brain and your body feel when your mind feels full? So think about all those different body sensations that you might feel. Think about how your brain feels. I'll give you about a minute. I'm seeing some good responses come in. Some folks feel like they're really scattered, like they can't really focus on one thing when they have a full mind. So they have to really work hard to try to focus on one thing at a time. Our, yeah. our cat in the chat, said, in the pair deck, the cat says that they feel like they need to take a nap, that they're just That's so- That's a good one. You know, when our devices are running slow, a lot of times we're like, oh, well, restart it. Sometimes my brain needs to <laughs> get that's restarted so too. And that says, what about lonely and tired? And I thought that was nice. And then they gave another one that uh, they, they combined it. So it's loaned. They call themselves loaned when they're feeling a bit lonely and a bit tired. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. The vultures that's tired, they sometimes get headaches and they can't really focus well. This one is really interesting because I haven't ever thought about this way this before. Uninspired, tired, and chaotic. That person is very aware of how their body feels. Some people say they feel heavy when they're stressed, weak and heavy bodies, which is very, very common. Impatient. <laughs> overwhelmed and crazy, overwhelmed and tired. We all have sort of a different spectrum of, of reactions to a full mind. And just to, rem to remind you, when your mind is full, it's full and like there's so many things going on that it's hard to manage it. And sometimes it is full in a positive way too. Somebody had asked, full and in what way? Full is in too much to handle or full in like everything's going well? There can be both sides of the spectrum, I think. Yeah, that's true. I know a lot of times I feel a lot of tension in my shoulders. I don't realize that I'm like scrunching them up 
and I have to tell myself like, oh, relax your shoulders. Um, the bird, really relax your shoulders. I love that. The bird says they feel like they're juggling too many things at a time. That's hard. That's hard. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about like physically juggling and I can't even like do three no I can barely do one <laughs> yeah two is my happy place right if two hands can juggle two things all right so let's get into some strategies now um, that should help you uh, with mindfulness one of my favorites is square breathing. And um, as this graphic loads, it's one of those things where you don't need anything, there we go, um, to do square breathing. You don't need any tools. You don't need to be in any specific place. You don't even need to have people know that you are doing this. You could be in the middle of a crowd. You could be in the middle of a classroom and no one would know that you are doing this. Um, so it's very simple. Um, you each for each part you count to four so if it helps you you, know, you can use your finger you can go breathe in two three four hold two three four breathe out two three four hold two three four so if you want to try that um it's really nice because it kind of helps our lungs start, uh, get the oxygen that we need, breathe out the carbon dioxide we don't need, kind of helps to regulate all those body processes that we might not know are, are off um, when we are feeling stressed. So go ahead, give this one a try. And even if it might feel silly, it does help to do the body, the finger tracking around it because it gives you something to think about as you're breathing too. Oh, that's a good one. I never thought of it as like a the, your physical body like interacting with it. I just, I use it as kind of like a guide to remember where I am because sometimes when I'm so overwhelmed, I can't even think straight. And so just having that physical guide helps me. But this is one I definitely use because it's, it's easy and you know, you can feel overwhelmed and not want the person next to you to know that you're feeling overwhelmed and very easily take care of that. <sighs> I feel better. <laughs> Breathing is <laughs> always a good feeling. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I have another one. I hope the GIF or GIF, depending on what team you're on, but oh, it might not play. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Okay, well, we'll just have to interpretive dance it, but you can do it in your with your hands as well. Um, this one is a GIF, and uh, the it goes down to a triangle and up to a, I don't know, remember how many sides, but, um, you know, basically it, like, kind of opens and closes. So if you think of that, or you think of, like, a flower, like, opening and closing. So this one is really nice. Breathe in, breathe out. Some people really love, um, you know, these breathing visualizations. A lot of um, mobile phone and, uh, you know, tablet apps have them. You can go to YouTube and find, uh, you know, just type in breathing visualization. If you just open a new tab in your browser and search breathing visualization, you know, sometimes a video will just pop up straight in the browser. And so that can be really helpful if you need something um, to follow along with. Hey, Mari, I have a um, GIF that's working. <gasps> I'm going to share my screen right now, and hopefully okay. it will let me share with you all. <laughs> and we can check out a cool, it's not exactly the one that um, Mari had shared, but it's a pretty cool visual of breathing in and breathing out, and then um, holding it in between. Ooh, I like that. Hey, Coulter, in the background. Do you yeah. mind? Um, actually, I think that Mari has to um, stop sharing maybe for a second. <laughs> our Pear Deck is so full of all of our friends. 
that <laughs> we don't have um, the chat floating, but I have gremlins in my computer too, and I cannot share. So I think maybe we should. Oh no! Move. Sorry. That's okay. There. Are we good? <laughs> Internet gremlins today. <laughs> it is okay. Sometimes you know, with that. Oh my gosh! When you know technology isn't working, sometimes I just take that as an opportunity to. Okay, I guess this is the moment I just need to take a few deep breaths. Yeah, that's that's always helpful. Mm -hmm. um, another one. Now this one takes not very much space, um, so it's up to you if you want to do this uh, standing or seated. Um, but I just read this in a book a couple months ago um, as a way to kind of almost like shake out your body and kind of get rid of all the stuff. Um, so you can either stand up or you can stay seated. If you're in a classroom, then teachers, you know, instruct your students as you desire. Um, if you're, you know, in your own space, then do as you want. But what you're going to do is take a really deep breath and then tighten all your muscles and count to 20. If you don't get to 20, it's okay. Just try to get as close to 20 as you can and then exhale everything and give it a good shake out. Okay. Give you a little bit of time to give this a try. It is amazing how this works. <laughs> oh, that's a good one kind of energizes me a little bit. It's it's a yeah. good one. <laughs> I never really realized like the, how powerful that could be. Um, it seems like the opposite of what you should, if you're feeling stressed, like don't tighten all your muscles, but somehow physiologically it actually works. I love it. Pretty rad. It's a great one. Like, you know, we can't always get out for a walk. Um, I guess I can't say that word too loud because I am at home and the dog might hear. Um, but, you know, can't always get out to exercise or like go play basketball or, you know, something like that. Um, so this is a good one where you just need to shake it all out real quick. So I love it. Mari, should we check in? We've done a lot of breathing. I feel good. I'm wondering how all of our friends out there feel. Definitely. Yeah, we want to hear from you now. How are you feeling after these? Here they come. There's so many people typing right now. Did you know we can see you typing as it's happening? <laughs> the alligator says they feel slightly less tired. The aardvark, that's an armadillo, not an aardvark. Armadillo says loose and relax like they were floating. Calm and more tired. Mari, have you ever felt that when you do lots of breathing and you suddenly feel very, very tired? <laughs> yeah, like I'm oh, a little yawny, right? Yeah, just because you kind of like, you do relax. You know, and this is good too if you're ever having trouble sleeping these breathing exercises and the next thing we show you are so good for, you know, definitely getting yourself tired. I love this. The panda says light, new and fresh. <gasps> oh, those are and relaxed. The donkey said they feel the donkey said they feel present and more alive. That reminds me of the donkey from Shrek. That donkey is very alive. <laughs> yes. Red flower, blue thorns. <laughs> Uh, the boar says they feel stretched out and less tense. Relaxed, peaceful, and happy. It sounds like we had some really good breathers on the call today. <laughs> I know. And remember, these aren't supposed to, you know, make you feel bad. You know, you got to do, you got to know your body and, you know, practicing these things. But if something doesn't work, don't force it either. You know, if you don't feel comfortable, if your body doesn't feel comfortable with those breathing exercises, it's okay, you know you know what you're able to do. I think there's one, um, the dino says that 
um, the breathing exercise made them feel calm um, and, you know, uh, you know, kind of help calm them after hearing some really bad news um, recently. So that is very, um, very helpful. You know, bad, we hear things bad in the news and in our families, within our friends. And so sometimes using these, it can't get rid of the bad, but it can help us be a little bit more present and um, address those with a little clearer of a mind. So I appreciate you saying that, Dino. Ready to try one more? This one I love. Bailey, have you ever done a body scan before? I do a body scan every morning. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love body scans. <laughs> I do too. These are really good for well, all the time. You do them in the morning. I tend to do them at night when I'm especially having trouble going to sleep because, you know, when your mind is so full and just does that spin, 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 spin um, and doesn't want to put you to sleep, um, you know, I think that's not as great. Um, so I'm going to play this and Bailey, I can see you. So just give me a thumbs up if, if and when you hear the audio because I don't know. No audio? I didn't hear it yet, but um, let's see. Let's see. I... Well, <laughs> we're going to figure this one out. Yes. Oh, look at that peaceful mountain scene. That is so nice. Hmm. I'm just looking on my app, Mari. I'm wondering if I play it here from my iPad. Can you hear this okay? Okay. How about I start the three minute timer or the three minute body scan here? You are wonderful. Let's do okay. it. Let's do it. <laughs> Welcome to this three minute guided body scan. Start by finding a comfortable position with a straight back and close your eyes. Rest your hands gently and allow your shoulders to relax. And take a few deep breaths to ground you in this moment. Feeling your breath as it enters your body and as it leaves your body. Follow the calming breath, the soothing breath, the breath that connects the mind and body. And now bring your attention to your head. Feeling into your scalp, forehead, and face. Allow all the muscles in your head and face to soften. And lower your focus to the neck and shoulders, noticing any sensation here. Bringing awareness to your arms, all the way through to the wrists, palms, and fingers. Observing any sensation that arises on the surface of the skin or deeper within. Now scan your back. And if you notice any intensity, direct the breath into that area to allow for a softening. Feel into the belly, observing its rise and fall. Rise and fall. And scan your pelvis and hips. 
moving your attention all the way into the legs and feet. Letting them relax and become soft. And now settle in the stillness that comes from paying attention to your body, part by part. And when you're ready, wiggle your fingers and toes. Come back to the room and open your eyes. Enjoy this relaxed, peaceful state and take it with you into your day. That was so nice. All right, so go ahead, Bailey. Well, I almost don't want to interrupt everybody because I know I'm feeling very calm. <laughs> I know, me too. Um, and we'll give you a chance to describe how your body, you know, is feeling after this. You know, shout out to some of you, like our squirrel and a couple others um, that have mentioned like, you know, that really wasn't for me. Thank you for trying it. Um, and thank you for realizing, hey, maybe that's not my strategy. You know, it works for some of you, but not others. And um, thank you for giving it a try. We appreciate that. Um, somebody had never used that app or that body scan before and they said it felt refreshing and cool. So thank you for that new experience. Okay. So great. The bear, man, we have some people who really have a way with words with us today. The bear said they felt perfectly serene and untouchable. Nothing could bother them. I love that. That's so nice. But I also, I, I um, I don't agree, but I understand that feeling of like, ah, this isn't for me because it takes a while to get used to it. And for some people, it will never be the best way to check in with um, themselves. Yeah, sometimes when you're in a big room of people too, it can feel uncomfortable. So maybe it's something that you try again you know, mm -hmm. with just a couple friends or by yourself. Mm -hmm. The crab says they feel more present. <laughs> I love Which that. Is awesome. I see the peacock and the steel are both saying, I feel tired. <laughs> I feel tired after that. Mm -hmm. Well, we go through our days sort of needing to be energized. So sometimes when you take a minute to feel more present and calm, you can feel a little bit tired. And that's just the reality of the change between being busy and active and engaged to just being present with your mind and your body. Yeah, definitely. All healthy reactions. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is why I love body scans and why I always do them. The kangaroo said, very relaxed. I was able to unclench my muscles that I didn't know I was clenching. That's Which, a good one. Because hmm, sometimes you get so focused on what's going on around you that you don't notice what you're doing with your own body. That's a good one. You know that we carry our stress in different parts of our body and learning what parts those are. It's a good body check-in. Love it. All right, let's try a few more um, strategies that might may help your uh, body. So this one is chair stretches. You can call them chair stretches. You can call them yoga. Either way, um, you know, whatever feels right to you but basically these are things that you can do without having to get up so they're great for when you're in school like around people and have 
that physical space. Now mind your arms, um, you know, so that you're not in somebody else's personal bubble. Um, but these are really nice for you know, using that space um, even when you can't get up. So for each one, we're gonna do three different rounds. I'll show you two different uh, stretches and you can try one or both, um, but in Pear Deck, you can drag your little marker to which one you tried. So, and if you did both, feel free to drop it in the middle. So first one, you can try Cobra Pose as this is loading, uh, grab the back of your chair and lean back. Um, so you might see it on your Pear Deck, but not on the screen again, because we have such a big party here on Pear Deck. There we go. It's taking a little second, but Cobra Pose, grab the back of your chair and lean back with your feet flat on the ground and Cat Pose, kind of the opposite. Put your hands on your knees and lean forward. So go ahead, try that. A lot of you are, a lot of you tried both. That's awesome. Seeing a lot of you lining up in the middle here on Pear Deck. You tried one or the other. That's great. All right, going to try our next set. So this set, you'll see extended side angle pose. So you'll take your opposite hand, go to your opposite foot and reach, reach, reach as we're loading up here. You do it on both sides. Give it a good, ooh, good stretch. That feels nice. Or if you have a little less space, crescent moon is great when you have less space. Just hands over your head like you're going to dive into a pool. Just tip one way, come up. The other way. It's really nice. Awesome. Seeing some of you tried both, some of you tried one or the other. That's great. All right, and one more round. So extended mountain pose is great if you are short on space. Um, great even in the car. You know, some of these, like if you're on a road trip, sometimes great to get some wiggles in without having to get out. Extended mountain pose, put your feet flat on the ground and just hands straight up. Forward bend requires a little bit more space, so um, you know, use your space if you have it. And if you don't, um, that, you know, maybe won't be your best option. Oh, I guess I didn't put a draggable on this. Oopsies. That's okay. You can just drag in your head which one you tried. Um, but forward bend, just reach out, grab, you know, your calves, your knees, your calves, your ankles, your toes, whatever is comfortable to your body. I'll give you a chance to do this. So just some nice stretching. Those are nice when we're sitting a long time. Sometimes, you know, if I'm working really hard on a project or an assignment, I'll just, um, you know, pause, stretch a little bit, you know, whatever feels good for my body and then keep moving. It's amazing how that just, you know, helps my mind feel a little bit more present. So I'm gonna check in again with you all. Curious, what are some other ways that you can get your body moving that's comfortable for you. This is so interesting because I'm seeing people saying this, I don't feel tired, but I still feel mindful. So it's so cool that you can be mindful, but also be active and energized. I think a lot of the times we think Mindful means like very serene and peaceful and still, but being active can also be a mindful act for us as well. 
I love that. And I remember, you know, I think we see, you know, or hear like in social media and like in other spaces, like, you know, meditation and mindfulness, like it has to take 30 minutes or you're not doing it right. You know, but these, everything we're showing you is things that are, you know, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, you know, and things that you can do when you're out and about going on with your day, you don't have to get to that special space with that special mat or pillow. Um, right. There's lots of examples of that in the pair deck. So lots of people are saying, just stretching your legs and back out, doing a few jumping jacks, touching your toes, shaking, having a quick brain break. Well, those are really quick ones. And then there's longer examples um, in the pair deck as well. People talking about doing yoga classes or going for a horseback ride or going for a walk in nature or at the park. So there's I love all it. sorts of things, which tells me that you all probably will find something that you love to do that's active and energizing, but also a mindful um, a mindful activity swimming and walking our cat jumps on a trampoline that's <laughs> that's, so that's a good one too <laughs> we have lots of dancers on the call mari i have to shout out all the I dancers ballerinas <laughs> you know so we just turn on music and have your own little dance party yes it's <laughs> a, a lot of fun too <laughs> Uh, and remember, these are a lot of things that you can do with friends too, you know, going for a walk or, you know, with a pet or with a family member, you know, these are activities you can do um, together. Oh, I like this that our donkey says, with parent permission, you can use various exercise equipment. So depending on your age, you know, some of you, you know, younger folk need permission before you use, you know, certain equipment. And that's good. It's because your body's still developing, you need to make sure you're doing it safely. I love that. Love it. All right. Perfect, we have time for just one more quick activity. So this is going to be um, fun. This is a good one. You know, again, another strategy that works really well for some, not as well for others, and that's okay. Um, you know, try a new thing because you never know. So for this one, we're going to do just some quick journaling. No one is collecting this, no one is keeping it, it's just for you. So you're going to open up a new Word document on your device, um, add today's date at the top of the page like a journal, and for the next, let's just do four minutes. For the next four minutes, we're going to be quiet and give you a chance to write whatever's on your mind. You know, just there's, just type, you know, whatever comes to mind. And just kind of let out, see where your brain flows to. So again, opening up a new Word document. Go ahead and write.
All right, so finish up your last thought there. And we'll give you an opportunity to share in Pear Deck. How did journaling help your mindfulness? Awesome. For some of you, you know, um, I know that, uh, you know, sometimes writing is hard, but drawing is easier. So you can always draw a journal as well, if that's better. Um, the pigeon said they can rant about um Harry Styles because their mom is sick of hearing about Harry Styles, which is hilarious. It made me laugh when I read it, but it also is proof that journaling is a good spot to talk about things that maybe you don't want to share with other people right away or um, things that other people are um, not as passionate about as you are. And then you have a perfect spot where you can say exactly what you want to say. I love that. Uh, mm -hmm. The snake says that they think it's helpful to journal because they can put all their emotions into writing, but they prefer writing on paper better. So I think that's awesome. Yeah. I Thank love you. it. Our clownfish says that it helps you express your emotions instead of keeping them packed inside of you. Yeah, I the fox that. Says same thing. They said all the dirt off your mind, which is a really cool way to think about it. Get dust, dust everything off. Get the cobwebs off. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. All right. So as we're winding down, just a couple other quick questions for you. This one, why is it important to practice our mindfulness skills? And what does this do for you? Mm, so many good answers. We have so many thoughtful people with us today. It's important to practice our mindfulness skills because our body and our mind are important assets and we have to take care of them. Ooh, I love that. Take me the answer. To stay in the now and not get swept up in anxiety or worry or stress. That was a good one from the kangaroo. The woodpecker says it's important because it allows you to release all your negativity. Because the skills will help you in the future and today. There are some really good responses in here. I love it. The aardvark says it tells you how to keep your emotions somewhere and not take it out on others. That's an awesome point. One smart yeah. aardvark. <laughs> To calm down and to unwind, says the shrimp. <laughs> if we take care of ourselves, then we can take care of others. Wow. We have some very empathetic beings with us today, Mari. How lucky are we to spend an hour with us? I, I know. It makes me happy knowing that you know you all are the young people growing up into this world and you know learning how to take care of you so you can take care of others. That is so great. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, so we have one more opportunity for you to um, practice a different type of mindfulness, and that is a type of gratitude and thanking people around you. Um, so this is our final opportunity in Pear Deck. So for this one, I want you to give somebody a shout out 
thank them for something that they have done. A lot of a lot of you teachers are getting shout outs. Miss Ace, you're getting a shout out. <laughs> Lots of moms getting shout outs for being good listeners. Oh, I love that. Miss Dianello's class gets a shout out. <laughs> I'm thinking that must be from Miss Dianello or herself. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Mm. This is. Aww. Thank you for helping us feel less virtual. That's so nice. You can connect even in the virtual realm. Love this. So many shout outs. Lots of people thanking their friends for being good listeners and being good supporters when they need it. I see a thank you shout out to their teacher, uh, especially Miss McGowan. Yeah, let's shout out all the teachers. As a teacher, I'd like to shout out the teachers. <laughs> Big ups to the teachers. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. And you know, students remember, you know, your teachers are human too. And like sometimes we need a moment to just like, do some square breathing. Um, you know, and I think that's great. You know, we can model for you, you know, all of this and help you be better. So I love this. Shout out to Bailey, shout out to Coulter for being an awesome team this morning, you know, making this a whole lot of fun. Shout out to you all for being on Pear Deck. We had 930 students join to Pear Deck this morning. Yes, it's thank you so Great. much. It was awesome. With our huge class, we had so much fun. <laughs> yeah. So uh, teachers and students, we're going to make this Pear Deck um, student paced now, which means now you'll have the opportunity to go back and forth um, in the Pear Deck if you didn't finish an answer, if you want to go back um, to any parts of the recording and you know, play the recording and be on that slide, that is completely okay as well. So um, the Pear Deck is student paced, we'll leave it open, we won't close it. So thank you all for taking the last hour to be with us. We hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day, rest of your week and rest of your school year.